right, guys, welcome to another edition of Chat with Charlie. This is episode seven. Already, we're just in the February mark, and we're at seven episodes. This is crazy. And this is going to be, I think it's a Friday. This is going to be a fun conversation. <laughs> we got Claude Beckles, Bobby Bonds here, two of Mission's greats, yep. um, Hall of Famers, if we had Hall of Famers, yeah. wearing the belt, raise the jersey, all that kind of stuff in the Mission's. But we're going to talk a little yep. about just that. And and for those of you who are not in the education vertical, it's sales. I mean, what we do is in, in, in sales, everybody's got their own definition of it, but we work with individuals and find their need and match it to what we're offering for our purposes we're offering programs and outcomes and and great careers but claude why don't you introduce yourself bobby bond you've been on before but please introduce yourself and your ten thousand companies you have and 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 your world travels and everything that'd be great so please claude yeah and by the way real quick what's that bobby i have claude on um we did a thing in vegas and we did a show out there and claude asked a question and no one cared about the show but everybody wanted to know who the dude was with that deep, very white voice, and they wanted to do voiceovers. So <laughs> look at that laugh That's right great. there. We got to get that laugh. Someone's going to want that as their ringtone, that laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we could, maybe we could monetize that. Um, monetize it. Anyways, go ahead. I know. I've been in this business for uh, – quite some time now yeah uh, i used to work with mr bonds in uh in nashville and uh you and i met each other in uh, right after Nashville. right after that uh, yeah. yeah it was after nashville but i love what i do and i love what you said it's sales and it's changed a lot from when i first started with the technology and everything that's available now in the way in which you can reach out and meet and talk to people and try to help them to get to where they want to go but i love what i do you know, and I love the product that we have here. I only work with the Aviation Institute of Maintenance Schools and being able to look a parent yeah. or a kid in the eye and say, if you really put your effort into this, um, the outcome is going to be is going to be great for you. What year did you join in this kind of career? Oh, geez. You really want to? I really, mean, you, was it black and white TV? <laughs> I could remember when leads came on cards. The old Rolodex? Yes. You're going to work your A's on Monday, right. work your other I ones on Tuesday? I could remember when leads came on cards. I could remember um, doing this before texting was a part of the contact strategy. Well, yeah. <laughs> of course. You were in a Rolodex. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's changed. We were talking the other day about all of the changes, but at the end of the day, it's still the same thing, reaching out to another human being and, and being a positive influence on them and motivating them yeah. to where to go. But I've been doing this since, uh, since then. And we're going to talk about that because some people are going way too far, I think. And, mm-hmm. and but, but it's all an opinion based thing. But Bobby Bonds, please join in, talk to us. No, Bobby Bonds, I've been in the education space since 2008. So I'm like Drake, man. I've been here since. <laughs> uh, uh, we have four, three schools in South Florida, and we actually just got our fourth. That uh, we just got this beautiful building in Fort Lauderdale. That That's we're going to awesome. have our fourth school. And then I, I have a lot of uh, experience in a lot of different areas. And so I took my show on the road and we started the Aquinas Network. And so we help people with accreditation consulting. We help people with admissions marketing, pre-admissions, tech, and, and content building just to help people, uh, you know, build a better school and build a better curriculum for their yeah, students. So a potpourri I do of, all uh, of that. Offerings. I love it. And I love the reason why you came up with that name. For those of us who may have not seen our previous show, please remind us how you came up with that name. No, I came up with the name, the Aquinas Network, uh, because I was looking for a good name. And so I found the name of of Thomas Aquinas, who is the patron saint of colleges and universities. And I think very highly of myself. And so I changed the name uh, to the Aquinas Network. I put a little salt on it like Salt Bay. And uh, put a little salt on it and called it the Aquinas Network. So I love it. That's put a little con- put a little bonds kung pow. Little kung pow. Well, you guys have been in this a while, and and you know what I was thinking is, let's take it back to two thousand. You know, two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand four, and and what it was like. Even the Rolodex days. Mm-hmm. And again, I think you're right. It's nothing. It hasn't changed. There's been items that have enhanced it right? right now we have crms now we have a little automation with it that can help us now we have more sophisticated dialers but talk to me of what you guys have seen of the evolution of this and if the, the humans kept up with that so to speak for the most part like there's a lot of things that stayed the same right the kpis are still there you know i still use admissions math to today i make sure that you know if my representatives don't have 100 calls 
They better have three appointment sets. They better have two applications. And if they don't have two applications, you know, they better have 100 calls. You know, I, so I still use those KPIs. I would say the number one thing that's changed in this industry is the culture that we're building. You know, um, I think that we've gotten to a point where, you know, the one strike rule yeah. you know, doesn't apply anymore. You remember, if you remember the 2008 lot times, we were so scared to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. And if you made a small mistake, you got, you got fired. There was um, a PIP already that, written out for you. And obviously there's some things that you can't do, right? You know, you can't, you know, guarantee job placement. You can't do any of those things, but there's some things that I think as looking back on my career, this is a really bad example, but I'm going to give it anyways. I remember there was a guy one time and he was one of the best admissions reps that we had. Um, and I remember him saying to a student in passing, the student said, do I have to pay my student loans every month? And he goes, it's like a light bill, buddy. It's coming every month. <laughs> so he, he compared that student loan to a light bill and we fired that guy. And he was with us. <laughs> we did. We was with us for five or six years and he was a great employee, never got in trouble one time, said that one thing, we fired him. And that kills a company culture. Yeah. And so I just... You know, I think about that. I think about that instance often because that's just obviously not the way you want to run a business. And we're all human. We're going to make mistakes. And that remediation, I think, has improved. Yeah. But talk to us, Claude. You've been around a long time. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) There was that you remember when uh, the Department of Education came after our industry. Yeah. And if everybody started panicking, I was working for the school system where they started in. putting monitors in your office they took the doors off they wanted to they'd watch you we didn't even do numbers if you remember we a lot of schools went way and didn't want whiteboards anymore did exactly because they were so scared Scared. of the 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 perception that it gave and they spent millions of dollars putting all of these monitoring devices in and then after your interview you had to go meet with a compliance coordinator to see what did they ask you during the interview. Yeah, yeah. And they were so worried about us doing something wrong. And I could remember I was a rep at that time and I used to love it. I was like, I want you to hear my conversations. Yeah. Because I know I I don't have to lie, cheat, steal, or be uncompliant or misleading to do what I do. And what wound up happening after all that huge investment, you know what they discovered? Nothing. 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 Yep. I equate it, and I've used this before. You remember in recess, you're out there in recess having a good time. One kid throws a rock. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to come in from recess. And I feel like that's what happened to us in those early 2000s. Because there was some bad apples. There was people throwing rocks. But it painted such a wide brush over people that were doing a good service with people. Right. And now that, and some of those schools got weeded out. Um, and now there yep. are some people that are still standing. But I think, you know, to what Bobby said and what you're always preaching, it's the character of the people that you work with that create the right culture. And if everybody has, if they're coming from the right place, um, I don't have to worry about if I'm going to say something uncompliant. To steal you, if, if I'm not going to put myself, the company, or the student in jeopardy, then it's okay. Yeah. And to Bobby's point um, worried about saying all of these little things because if you could say something that's uncompliant that can get your school shut down, is it still a concern? Sure. But I think if you hire the right people, you work with the and right trust people them. and trust them because that's what happened back then. They didn't trust us. So now you want to watch everything that I do. Yeah. And what wound up happening, the CEO got let go because it was, it was a bad investment. A new guy came back in, and he and his exact words were, I'm going to trust you to do your job. Um, and I think that's what's going See, on. See, the one thing I think, and curious to get your guys' thoughts on this, we went through that, and then we empowered a lot of emissions people, including directors of emissions and things like that. And then I feel like over the last like couple years, we've gone back to devaluing um, their role, almost like they're just a cog in the wheel or something like that. And, and, and I don't know when you interview people or you talk to people, I feel like we've lost our edge because of that. I mean, because we had a good edge and I've always said this, it's not manipulation, but you're working with people on something they won't do for themselves. So it does take someone either to put a foot in their butt or be empathetic with them. And somewhere along the lines, I think we've lost that a little bit. I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts. You know, it's funny you say that, Charlie. I, if you, you may or may not remember this, but 2013, you told me, when I first moved to Savannah, you told me, 
the DOA needs to be the second man on on the campus. It's not the director of education. It's not the director of student services. She, you, you had told me if the campus president isn't tapping you on the shoulder when he's not there that day, then you're doing something wrong. And we just got to bring that back, man. We, gotta we do. But why do you think we <laughs> lost it? And again, we, we, we have a really hard time. I don't want you, but we have a really hard time finding talent and especially talent that really understands the job full circle. Right. And it's been a struggle. And then the people we do have, it seems like, and I don't know if it's a generational thing. I don't know if we're old and we're going to drink lemonade and, and talk about the good old days. But at the same time, there, there's that, that, that grind that. But that, I think you're 100% right. I was listening to this podcast. Uh, this my Cop podcast? We no, listen to mine? it was a different one. Oh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> and it's, all, it's All-Star Weekend. Basketball. And you remember how back in the day, you know, the first half, they may slough off, but second half, they're playing for real. They they're come out hard. Yeah. Now, do you know who won the dunk contest last year? Don't care. Don't know. Don't know. Don't care. It's a different mindset. So I don't know if it's because we are maybe a little bit older, but I do think yeah. there is a difference in uh, people's approach. Um, they talk about that, you know, that Mamba mentality. That I'm hungry. I'm going to get it. Um, I think that's a little bit lost. But isn't that transferred onto someone else when you know. when you're meeting with them? If know. you're vibing with that person and and you're in your career, mm -hmm. they need a career. Like I almost get a sense that we we reduce it to more transactional these days. And I and I don't know if it's because of technology either. If that's why, I think technology may play a role in it. But you know, you can't teach passion. Yeah, you, you can't right. teach passion. I remember when I met Bobby. Bobby, when we were in Nashville, Bobby walked around that place like he owned it and everybody yeah. bought into it. Yeah. His passion just came out every single day. Yeah. And I think that may be it. I don't know. They did this a good example about LeBron James. He's at the All Star weekend last weekend and he's got so much going on with social media, with everything outside of playing basketball, that he's shooting commercials as he's driving to the game. Yeah. So with everything that's going on right now, I, I don't know. Everybody Quavo shot a video, a music video at a game. Have you seen this? Yes. It, it was in front row. Have you guys seen this? Quavo was at the Quavo? front row of the Lakers game, and they're filming a music video music right video, there right. while the game is going on. I mean, I thought that was pretty Who's sick. Who's music so, video? Uh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> technology has changed things uh, dramatically. Um, you everything. But it is, made is it made it too like. A career for me is something that relates to me personally, and I'm fully invested in. That's right. a career. Mm -hmm. This has been a career for me. A job yeah. is something you're doing until you find that career, right? Because you're, you're punching the clock. You got to pay bills, so you need something. I feel like we've evolved from a career to a job to some extent. And people have lost it. And I'm, I'm, this is my opinion. I'm not saying it's right. Sure. But I feel like somehow we've lost that. This is a career. This is a great career. One, it's rewarding as hell because you're, you're doing something that impacts generations. Mm -hmm. But secondly, it's, it's important for me because I've learned life skills the whole time I've been in emissions that have changed me outside of work. Right. On how to represent myself or mature, you know, those type of things. Do you guys get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to paint a bad thing. I'm just, it's just interesting to see where we've evolved to um, in this field we love so much. No, you know, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. I mean, we, we don't have that problem. Uh, you know, I'll tell you that my biggest problem right now is my competitors trying to steal my people. That's I kid you not. Like we have built such a good company culture all right, that I got. You need to find vultures, out all four man. campuses' <laughs> phone numbers because we know he's right? so we got it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> by the way, what do you pay them? <laughs> What's your pay but range you on that? that? <laughs> Charlie, you guys have that too. You guys got a lot of A players, man. We got, a, got no, a no, no. We got a lot of A players, yeah. and we're, we're getting more and more sophisticated as it comes. I hear you. I hear you. The poach game is still yeah. alive. I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the thing. What I've done to create that is we we do have a little bit of a different mentality and you might think I'm crazy when I say this but we allowed the people to kind of define what the culture was going to be as long as the uh, production was there right as crazy as it sounds my employees don't work past two o'clock on Friday I, 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 I don't think that's not. crazy no. I mean I've looked at four tens too but they'll work until eight like I, I don't even have to ask them to they'll work until eight um you know, we got rid of the script a long time ago. Yeah. We follow a yeah. flow. You know, we don't we don't do the script anymore. We just follow the flow. 
And, you know, that's really what I've learned is that culture will beat your KPIs any day of the week. And, uh, and we, and we, we dive on that. No, man, I love that. I think, you know, I think we've done that. That's definitely over the last three years. I think we've done a good job of, of getting a sophistication to it. I think for us, one of the struggles was industry standard kind of looking at the journey and the funnel and the numerics of it and where we wanted to place kind of our watermark. And, mm -hmm. and so we can see how successful we are as individuals and things like that. And I do think we're there. Mm -hmm. I think we got there. But I also think the things that you're doing, I think we've always had to do that. I, I think pay for the most part is not the single driver that everybody thought back in the day. Yeah. There's so many other intangibles that make someone want to go through a wall for you, just like what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. If you can create an environment where your people enjoy coming to work. Yeah. You know, where they're not yeah. watching the clock. Because that goes to the other person, too. If they're yeah. having fun, mm -hmm. it's contagious to the person they're talking sure. to. Uh, when I was a, a director, one of the things that I, you know, I had to have music playing in my lobby. I had to have music, yeah, like Marvin Gaye and stuff like that. And, or well, some, you... it depends. Whatever rep had the whatever rep had the great day, uh, the previous day, they picked the music. You for let the them day. pick it. I like that. You know, so yeah. um, Jaden uh, uh, Yai, Yai Den, um, yeah. I used to work with her. Um, I believe she's one of your campus presidents now. Um, yeah, yeah. But she had a great day. It was Spanish music all day. That's awesome. But the thing was, it was the students when they would come in there and they'd hear the music or somebody walking in for the first time and they'd feel that vibe. Yeah. We created a culture at the campus where the reps had a good time, the students had a good time, and we drove a lot of business. Do you think directors, the managers have forgotten that and they're so nervous and stressed to deliver outcomes that they forget about that side of it? I, I guess it could be. I don't be. know. I, you know, I'm not, I haven't, you know, I only visit campuses. Um, or just in general, you talk to your peers and stuff like that. Right, but what, but what I'm saying is that when, when I visit a campus, you know, I know um, I'm, I'm going to maybe see the best of you. Um, but I'd like to feel as if they feel empowered to create the type of culture that they want when they're at a campus. And I can remember... Um, the campus president, he was like, what's all of this? I was like, listen, man, let me do what I do because we're going to have some fun around here. And he was the type of executive director that would, you know, come to the campus and go right to his office. Good. Let me be the the guy who's driving this. Let yeah. me be that. And, and driving is fun. Exactly. No, 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 no. I don't mean driving is fun. I'm, I, I'm no, it is. Driving, comma, is by doing fun. Right. Like, I think people misunderstand, do calls, do this, do that. Just putting on music, buying some rebels, and treating them like a human being and mm -hmm. important to this organization gets a lot more out of them than just showing a metrics every hour saying you should have done this, where are you at on this, where are you doing on that. I think those those right. intangibles, and I've learned that over time. Right. I, I mean, I can't say I learned it right away. Um, you know, Bonds, I don't know if you agree with that, but yeah. I mean – I mean, I remember being at South. I mean, part of the part of the charisma there was a little bit of autonomy and having some good character moments. I mean, sure. I can think of one individual. I'll just use the initials PB. And I remember just having so much fun. I don't know if you remember going on the whiteboard. We went to the timeline of life with this. <laughs> Do you remember that? I Excuse me, I can't, I can't think of who that is. Oh, man, come oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You yes. know what I'm talking about now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The last thing I'll, I'll mention to kind of, because Claude just mentioned one of my employees, uh, Jaden. Um, you know, I think about the other thing that really kills a culture is the firing culture, right? Yeah. The ones where, you know, you, you say something you shouldn't, you're fired. Like there's no coaching, you're fired. Or you're not a good admission rep, you're not getting students, you're fired. So you, if you remove that from the culture a little bit and, you know, realize that bad admissions employees aren't bad employees sometimes, like just because you can't, you know, hit the goal that we've given you doesn't mean you're a bad employee. 100%. You just might, admissions might not be for you. And I think about that with Jaden because, and I, you know, I know this is going to be on whatever, but Jaden wasn't the best rep. She was good, but she wasn't the best. And she knows that. I can say that to her. Um but what she was is she was always on time. She's always reliable, always understood the programs, understood her job better than anybody else. And that's why she got promoted. It wasn't because she was the best rep, it's because she had all those other pieces that helped her get to where she's at. And I think we've evolved from that too. It wasn't you throw right. down great numbers, we're going to make you this. 
now there's yeah. a lot of intangibles to talk about. So I'm going to throw a couple of things out, out at you. The first one is remote. How's remote changed us? Meaning remote employees and things like that. Ooh. And I'm talking about the industry. Dang, bro. I don't want that. <laughs> <I just said. laughs> Should I go to the next one then? <laughs> you know, listen, I, I, maybe, I'm, maybe it's the 1950s in my house, you know? <laughs> my kids don't Those, That drapery behind you, bro. I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Madrid. I got this good drapery behind me. Um, my kids aren't allowed to listen to music with 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 swear words in it. Yeah. In my <laughs> Wait a minute, is this Bobby Bonds? Ups. Wait a minute, who am I talking to? <laughs> my, my my kids can't listen to music with swear words, and my admission reps have to work from the office. <laughs> That's my rules. <laughs> now I agree with yeah. you. There, there's some. Yeah. I do know some companies who try the remote thing, especially after COVID, they wanted to try it and stick with it. They did a return to work um, because it, yeah. you lose that chemistry and that things like that. There, there's so many things around you that affect your personality. And when you're working with another human, you need that. That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously scenarios that it works. You I know. know. I, I, I mean, knew you were going to say that. But, <laughs> but for me, like I holistically, they I, they got to be in the office. Would you agree with instead of remote from a home in your jammies? What about remote and working in campuses as a corporate employee, and you and you and you do your thing out of there? Not necessarily for that school, but you 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 office out of there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the, it builds the culture. And look, there's a hundred reasons. You know, I saw a Level Interactive posted a <laughs> posted this whole post about why you should be working remote, and I. It was like whatever, <laughs> like, <laughs> like whatever, like you know, uh, the you can't say enough about the culture. You get those people in the office together, like, like I get it. The commute sucks. I get it. You know, the lighting sucks. Like whatever, all, all that stuff might be, but you, you know, it just you you get away from that culture when you when you don't have them together. Absolutely, the you don't have a cat walking stuff. on your shoulders. Or something like that. You know, there was, um, <laughs> with COVID, yeah. when we had COVID, we had some people came in, you know, you came to the office Monday, you know, you work from home Monday, Wednesday. It was like a split shift or a right, flex shift, shift or something, yeah. Um, and some of the staff liked it. Some of the staff flourished in that environment. Others didn't. Me, I'm like, I'm like Bonds. I'm old school. I, I want to see, I want, I want to have you in the building, you know. Um, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not big remote, but again, creating the right culture at the campus, depending on your staff, depending on their work ethic, depending on, can I really trust you to get the job done? You know, I think you create the schedule or you create an environment that's going to make your employees the most happy that you, that you're going to get the most production out of them. You know? So if you want to work a four by 10, go right ahead. Yeah. You know? Cause they'll do it. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's like bringing people in on 4th of July. All they're going to do is come in the office right. and, and despise you right? because they did that. And I've never really understand that. We came from that. I mean, we used to get emails, you know, three days before a holiday and it said, okay, you know, Did we you need right. half of you here and half of you here. And it was like, you're, you're going to get less. Mm -hmm. You're going to have diminishing returns. The other thing too, and I just want to put it out there. I think you can be successful at remote. I do. But I also think it takes a special individual. Right. It's not, it's a, not for everybody. It's not for everybody. And two, I think that they will always miss out on the DOA joking with the other reps and you can feel that or some vibe in the air of success that helps you in, a, in a, maybe a down morning or something like that. So you've really got to be an independent self-starter to really impact your day, mm -hmm. I feel, to be remote. Mm -hmm. So there are people that can do it, let's put it out there, but I don't know how sure. you find them. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you, you gravitate to that. I think it's just like finding that guy who has that passion that you can't teach. I think it's just like finding, you know, you run across those, those gems every once in a while, you know, that are just, you don't even have to, they just, they're just naturals at this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't know how you find them. You know, that's why you do group interviews. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in COVID, I worked at home like you guys did probably. And I mean, one, my wife wanted me out of the house, but I couldn't wait to get out of the house. I mean, I was yeah, like, right. I can't, I gotta get out of here. All right, my I'm buddy throw Eric's one. wife. What's that? My buddy, my buddy Eric's wife works from home, and I see what she does all day. 
That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, you're like, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, how we've evolved with text messaging, social media, those type of things. How have they affected frontline reps and, and how they do their job or, or has it affected them? Has there been a, a change? I'll tell you for us. I mean, we, we still, obviously I think that there's, and maybe this is, you know, old school of me, but I I don't think there's much you can take away from picking. Dude, up wait a minute. Like People are going to leave this call going, Bobby Bonds is one old soul, man. He is really <laughs> digging back oh, in the like, ages. <laughs> there's a lot to be taken from a phone call, right? Less than a text message. Yeah. You know, so we do still have a call strategy. We, we threw texts in there. Don't get me wrong, but there's still a call strategy to what we're doing because I don't think there, there's not a replacement for that good com- quality conversation. Um, but we, we try to text, um, we definitely have text in our call strategy. Have you looked at or, or, or delved into the, the AI stuff now where you can actually put them in the dialer without a human and they're intelligent enough to leave a message and actually do a little pre-qualifying and bounce it to a human. I mean, there's some crazy stuff out there, um, on the front end. I haven't. It's crazy. Like you, we, I saw, I think it was the. I don't know, maybe a year ago or something like that. And it was still a little robot kind of Max Headroom-ish, um, if you yeah. guys know that reference. Um, but, <laughs> but it was really taking away that initial dial time and giving a little more um, Kung Pao to it with an automated voice that was intelligent enough to steer it before it bounced to a rep. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. I mean, I, I'm like you. I, I don't think you're ever going to take the human out of it. As long as a human is evolved in it, you'll never take the human sure. out of it. But I wonder how that's not weakened, but changed up the philosophy of call strategies. And I'm glad to hear you say that because we do the same thing. I don't think it's necessarily changed it, and it depends on how you – Again, I think it goes back to the to rep as well. I used to have this rep I used to work with, and her dials were always low, but her interviews were always there. Her yep. texting was ridiculously high. Um, but she would have these great conversations, but she knew how to cut it off to turn it into a conversation. I think that you're seeing with social media, um, everybody wants to watch a video. And can you utilize that social media in such a way so you can create the conversation so you can eventually have that human yeah. contact? So like watching all of the, the chats with Charlie's, all of the different videos uh, that Mark and Johnny shoot for us, it's like, can you shoot that into a text? Hey, check out this new video. And now, and if they respond yeah. to that, now it creates the avenue to have the conversation. So I think if we utilize it the right way, it can get us to that human contact and yep. have that conversation. No, I agree with you. So, and I've used it, I've said this on previous shows too. There's a book I read and it had good historical reference that, you know, back in the 2000s or whatever you want to label it, but, but a long time ago, people were not pre-sold. Mm-hmm about 80% of them needed to work with someone to get them over the hump for that selling sure. process. And about 20% were pre-sold. And the argument, the data they were showing, it was across all verticals. Um, but now people are coming to the door need to be about 80 to nine, 85% pre-sold and only about 15% of that interaction to get them over. And so, you know, one thing we've been trying to do, and I was curious to know what you guys have thought on this, is we've really tried to get people more walking in the door that have an expectation, this is my home. Right. And then we're just sure. kind of helping out a little bit with the tour, the visuals, and stuff like that. And we've had to utilize social. We've had to use a lot of avenues for our demo, which is 18 to 35. Um, generally male, but we do have a, a huge female population, more so than most, especially in the trade realm. But that's you can see that helping a little bit and i and i don't know if it weakens us a little bit um and then we become account managers instead of you know emissions reps type things yeah but those people still have obstacles they, they do no they do they do you know? they do but i think that a lot of uh, our peers you know they're still using scripts they're still using dars you know daily activity reports yeah. and they're ticking a, they're ticking their calls and i feel like that involvement hasn't changed the focused on what's important you know what I mean? Or what's really, what do you really want? Do you really want a call? No, I want someone walking this building and seeing beautiful stuff and, 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 and rubbing shoulders with like-minded people so they mm-hmm. can be successful. You know, I'm going with that. And, I, and that I think technology has helped us with. But anyways, your thoughts yeah. or anything on that? And it's also, also depending on what we're like, what we do, Aviation Institute of Maintenance. 
uh, Tidewater Tech and Trade. We've got some pretty powerful programs. And I know, Bobby, most of your programs like nursing. These are sure. people where people, they're very much interested. So I They think, are, they are. You know, yeah. So if it's a nursing program, getting the people through the doors, it's – might be the is one step, but it's making sure that they qualify to get through the program because they're already they're very much interested in that. But see, we're niche too. That's a really right. good point, man. And 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 bonds, I love you to come in on this bonds. You know, it's not a commodity. I don't mean it to say it quite like that, but I mean, especially in the nursing, we've all done nursing based mm -hmm. on the schools we've had before. That's where you get into, okay, either looking at eight different schools and you've got to really differentiate yourself or have unique yeah. differentiators. We do too, but we're also a little bit more niched, which right. makes it hard to target too, find exactly. that persona. Mm -hmm. And so I, anyways, you guys get what I mean. Bonds, please. The, you know, I don't know those sexy programs. Like, yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. like the ones that that people actually want make your job a lot easier. You right. know, everybody's doing medical assistant. Everybody's doing you know the the those programs that we've all done. But when you're doing something like aviation and welding and nursing, like that's a, those are like the sex like sex is that weird sexy programs? No, that's an, that's an okay. Well, your 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 kids may or may not be able to use it, but but it's okay. <laughs> But, right, but, that that's where you you know it makes the job a little bit easier. No, and I think I think COVID yeah. helped us with that because those skill sets others didn't appreciate as much, and during COVID they were essential oh, skill yeah. sets. So I think oh, yeah. you know there's a, not luck I wouldn't say, but the timing for a lot of us mm -hmm. and and others understanding the essentialness of these programs that mm -hmm. we offer. And it was seen, especially during COVID, and people were very yeah, thankful sure. those guys were there. Um, and I think yeah. that's helped us as a as an organization type uh, perception management, if you will, yeah. um, type thing. So one more yeah. thing: how about CRM? Let's talk CRM a little bit. Um, customer relationship management. I think that's what the acronym stands for. <laughs> I just call it CRM. Yeah. But it's been man. I don't know about you, Bonds, and, and call, but I've I've done some sales interviews or pitches for crms and i'll tell you there they can do everything i mean there's there's almost yeah. too much i get like anxiety i'm like i'm gonna buy this and i only need 20 percent of it but 80 percent of it i'm like holy crap i mean this it's amazing yeah. where do you guys think crm game is going and does that take away from what i agree with you bonds 100 percent? i know claude does too if you're honest ethical don't put the company in danger you don't need a script you're working with another human we trust you we're gonna empower you to be successful I worry a lot of these tools are starting to take that out of what we do. But again, it's an opinion. It's just an opinion. I'll tell you, this This might be on topic, but I, I literally, I'm in Spain right now. I was working with the school this week. Is it the I running of the bulls, a, by the way? When is that? I wish. I that would be out awesome. So <laughs> but I got to meet with their admissions team, and we did a comparison of KPIs. I said, okay, let me see how many leads you get versus how many reps do you have. How many calls do you make versus how many leads you get? And we did all of that. And what they saw is my admissions reps were calling somebody on an average of nine times, like through the life cycle. Through a span or what are the maturity? Times. Yeah. Yeah. And they were an average of one. And so they were like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're calling that person nine times. And I was like, I can't believe you're calling them once. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? But the reason we were able to do that is because our CRM was a little bit more mature than theirs. We had a, yeah. we had a better CRM system to, to view that type of data. And I don't know what you think, but I think nine's low. I think no, be, and, I and, and, and I, you're definitely on point. Cause I think that that is helpful. Like when we were DOAs, I don't, I don't know if we really thought about this and maybe you guys did, but the data that I got then versus now like now i know oh. how many leads to deliver per rep so they can get the most out of their day with a call or a week even a call strategy and things like this yeah we know the maturity of an inquiry um window you know for us it's 39 days that that's you know as you work with them and try to engage with them have them raise their hand that's usually their most emotional psyche for our guys we got about 39 days or something like that but we wouldn't be able to do that without the crm technology and seeing touch points we know when to call people and when not to call people you've got your you know sure. heat maps based on geo when to call them so I do think that's all um, um, relevant and good.
But man, they've got so many bells and whistles. I mean, there's built in dialers, there's built in macro texting. There's so much built into these systems we have now that yeah. it's hard to navigate um, and roll out, especially when you're a bigger school group or whatever. I don't know. I've worked with different CRMs. I think that well, we have Velocity. But remember, we use Velocity, Verity, Velocity, Verity, yeah. Sales. I mean, <laughs> all of these different ones. And, and, and Pace. Again, I, I think Pace is one I used at one point. What, what do you use? Ace. It was called something called Pace. I don't know. Pace. Yeah, I do. I, I remember Pace. You know, um, I, I think yeah. Claude used Cobol or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know the from the analytics and the data that you can get, like, like Bobby said, it's, um, it gives you the information that you need so you can make informed decisions as to how you want to move forward, coaching, developing lead rotation, all yeah. of that. But as far as repping is concerned, I don't think it's, it doesn't make a difference as far as repping, is concerned. but it can make, I, I, I guess the argument would be, it can prioritize your day. May, Cause you know, really, really good reps stink at prioritization they think of right. paperwork yeah, and prioritization right. like they're terrible on it right and it's so hard to help help them keep that focus or something like that mm -hmm. because that's just not, not that's a strong strong point so i do think these tools delivered and trained in the right way can help with that it's just it's not like you can just take a crm and throw it in front of your sales force and say okay here you go here's a little bit of training you got to right. really be careful to what you put in front of people so that they get the max of who you want them to be. I guess that's my point. In right, a way. right. And again, is if it, if it can help me execute the contact strategy, if it can help the rep um, get through that call cadence, if all of that can occur because of the CRM, thumbs up. Yeah. Um, but again, not to go back to back in the day before all of that was there, we got the job done without it or certain reps right. would because of that yeah. passion to, to bring this full circle and personality, personality, their personality passion, yep. overrode everything and the, the way they could relate right. to people. Yep. And, and really we wrote that quote again, do you listen just to answer? Right. Or are you listening to truly listen? Right. And I think the reps are that were very successful, especially back in the day, if we can say it like that, they really listened. They didn't listen just to answer the question, you know, for the and they were in, they were just in that moment. Yeah. Um, I forgot which coach was talking about. It's like, you know, being in that moment. You know, I love watching reps when, you know, they're on the phone and um, and they got their computer up and they're, they're watching something else or they're looking at something else or they're, they're looking to see what their next phone call is going to be. And they got another human being on the phone trying to have a yeah. conversation. Hope they're focused, but right. okay. So we would go over there and <laughs> I'd go over there and I'd shut down their computers. And they'd be like, you're talking to another person. Yeah. Just be in the moment. Um, right. I don't know if you can teach that. Um, I don't know if everybody's lost it, but I've listened to some phone calls um, over the past several couple of days. Some of these calls are phenomenal, and some of them are to you know of just very transactional because they just want to check that. box. They want to check the box and mm -hmm. do it, which is is part of the empowerment I believe that we need to do. And I'm going to throw a name at you, Bobby Bonds. We're going to give her a shout out right now, Carrie Dad Perez. The worst at the CRM. Terrible, <laughs> terrible. But, a but great she rep. would have. 10 Cosmopolitan <laughs> magazines on her desk or whatever, yeah. just like this, thumbing through, and yeah. what you need. <laughs> what you need? Yeah. But she was yeah, the she best was rep I have, I mean, just all yeah. around admissions person, I think I've ever worked with. Would you agree with that? Yeah, no, she's one of the top 10 for sure. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, and Claude knows a bunch of them we work with yep. that were just horrible at the CRM. Terrible. Just always... <laughs> Like, so you couldn't even bring it up. Like, you couldn't even be like, you know, it's your call. Center. And you, wait a minute. And then you get that new DOA who wants to be like, oh, I'll fix that. And you're right. like, you're you like, want to go like this to him. Like, okay, good luck with yeah, that. <laughs> we had one rep that, um, I think Bobby, um, when I used to work with Bobby, um, she was a part of my team, mm -hmm. uh, cause Bobby was ran the entire online division. Um, and she was a beast. Yeah. And and you could yeah. she, she didn't care about the see she just give me the phone number, give me and no script. She was just natural conversation and you could just Because she watch loved her. the people yep. she dealt with. And you could they never talked about school. Her end because it was right. it was nursing. Uh her end she talk about where where are you from? Um, she starts talking about hair, lashes, and authentic. I bet too. It was not that wasn't authentic. a play, so nope. to speak. That's just it was who she authentic was. Yep. conversation to yep. get in, in. And I bet that person's like that on Saturday, on Sunday, on Friday night, the That's same exact is. way. That's who she is, and they would just show it. And 
It would yeah. always start with a text. And then she get him on the phone, and it was all organic and natural. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're running out of time, so I'm going to give you each. We do have a lot of director of missions that listen to our call, so I welcome you to give them one piece of advice that you've learned over your career that you think makes a DOA the most impactful within their job. I would say one of the things is um, create your culture. Um, build a team of people that you want to work with and keep your team happy, but then hold them accountable. And, um, and you can do both. Yes, yes, you can. And if you can create an environment when they walk into the building, they enjoy being there, whether it's music, whether it's food. I don't care what is what gets that team going. Identify that and then hire your team. Yeah. And don't treat everybody on your team the same way. I'm not going to manage Lawrence Taylor. Uh, that's a football player um, for you younger people. Um, I'm not going to manage. He's the one who, who tore up Theismann's leg. <laughs> exactly. Oh, we're, in really state. State, right? we're in the wrong state. We're in the wrong state for bringing um, his name up. <laughs> you're not going to manage Lawrence Taylor the way you manage another player. You know, um, you got to understand their personalities and you got to manage them accordingly. Um, and if Lawrence Taylor is going to deliver you on that game, everything that you need and you want to give him, then give Lawrence Taylor a day off. Yeah. But do what you got to do to make sure your team is happy and that you're winning. Treat them like a human. Yep. Love it. All right, Bonds, yeah. close us out, man. No, if I had one piece of advice for, you know, a growing DOA, it would be to learn everybody's job around you. Wow. You know, understand one. what that financial aid director does. Understand what that student services counselor does. Understand the, the uh, director of education's job. It's only going to make you more successful in your role. And it'll help you understand what they're going through. So you're not just looked at like a jerk all day long. <laughs> that's a that's a, that's a really take that in, guys. Right. That's a that's a good one too. <laughs> two the really best good ones. I could give you. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you spending time with us over in Spain. I think you're six. Were you six hours ahead of us? So you're dinner time. Yeah, now. happy hour starts in about four minutes. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. All right, all right, I'm hurrying, man. I'm hurrying. <laughs> hey, when you getting back to Florida, Bobby? So I come back tomorrow, uh, but I leave for Medellin on Monday. So I'm, uh, oh, I'm, I'm traveling back to Columbia. <laughs> My man. Well, thank you for being here. Seriously, we're going to do more together yeah. anyways. And, and you know, you've got your own show yeah. going and you're doing some great things um, with every organization you have. So yeah, please look up Bobby Bonds. We'll definitely give you a shout out in the in the credits at the at the end of it. Claude, as always, man. That voice, brother, just, Man, it's, like, it's like rubbing my earlobes with, with Listen, sound. That's creepy, that was, right? That's creepy. That's yeah, so creepy. Mark, strike that from the record. <laughs> Make sure that meets editing. All right, guys, this is our edition of Chat with Charlie, episode seven. Thank you for joining. Really special uh, thanks to Bobby Bombs for being here uh, over in Spain. And Claude, as always, thank you. And we'll look for you when we see you. Thank you. <laughs>